In this video, I want to focus on a streaming application service or an online streaming service for music and videos called Spotify. Now, before we actually show you ways of installing Spotify on a Linux system, let me first explain a little bit on what Spotify is. Now, if you've been on using the internet, uh, you probably already know. It is a streaming service that allows you to listen to millions of songs on multiple platforms. Now, I'm not going to show you all the different platforms like Windows or Mac iOS or Android, I'm going to take a look at the four ways you can install the Spotify desktop client on your desktop system if you're using Linux. Now unlike uh, Pandora, the, if you want to listen to a specific song, you basically have to create a station or add a song to a station. Spotify allows you to listen to a certain song, a certain song without creating a station. Uh, now, are there there is two versions of Spotify. There's the Spotify free versus the premium. So before I actually bring up the application program and, and start using it, or before I even show you how to install it, let's take a look at some of the on the website for Spotify. There is the version, the free version, and that's what I'm using versus the premium version. Now, with the premium version, you do get a lot more because you're paying for more. Uh, with the free you can listen to millions of songs and you can actually shuffle your play now for 9.99 a month you can with the premium service you'll get uh, you can play any track you can listen offline you it allows you to to download the songs you get no ad interruptions now with the free you'll have a slight ad at the bottom that's not bad that will and I'll show that in just a few moments when you get unlimited skips and you get a higher quality audio with the premium version. Now also if you're using Linux uh, it shows you way for installing uh, it on a Linux system and I do have the illustrated steps here with a link to this if you have more uh, questions and then there is links on here uh, that you can post for forums because if you look it says that uh, Spotify for Linux is a labor of love from our engineers that wanted to listen to Spotify on their Linux development machines. They work on it in their spare time and it's currently not a platform we actively support. So unlike your Windows and Macs if you have questions you can post it in a form and hopefully someone that works on the program or someone in the community will be able to help you so don't let that turn you off if you're using Linux now before we actually get uh, into installing Spotify desktop client on your Linux desktop system there is the web version the web app that you can go to openspotify.com and I have a link on my website for that as well where you can log in with your account as you can see here I'm logged in with my username and it looks very similar and I'll compare the similarity between the actual desktop client and the web app in just a moment so there is some limitations with uh, the web app compared to the desktop app you you don't have the option of videos now before we do get started on showing you how to download the program and install it on your system let me show you a slight disadvantage for installing the program on your system regardless of which method you use here is the deb package which means you can download it and install it by gdebbie the program to download is 108.46 megabytes so it's a pretty big file compared to some of the other application programs that you're usually normally downloading and installing once it's completely extracted and installed in your system it will use up 268.68 megabytes so it is a large program so if you're using an old laptop or an old desktop and you're struggling for space you may want to choose to use the web app you know that you're using your uh, browser and luckily that they created this web app you know I guess for Chrome users you know you can install a, a Chrome app that basically puts an icon that you create a click the link but it uses the web so this helps you on uh, taking up space on your system so if you're really not really caring about the the videos or some of the other features that you might get with the desktop client you might want to go with the web app versus the desktop client now if you're really wanting to install it on your system I do have the steps for installing it and there's probably more than four methods I just chose the four methods uh, just in case that you would like to install it and don't like using the terminal because I do show the terminal here but you don't have to use the terminal you can use the Ubuntu Software Center 
open up your uh, software center search for Spotify click the install button it'll prompt you for your password and it will install it now if you don't have the Ubuntu software center you can copy this put that in your terminal and that will install the Ubuntu software center the next method is by using Snapcraft snapped craft if you click this link here it'll take you to the Snapcraft website and since I do have it highlighted for Spotify you just choose the version like the stable version or whatever the cutting edge which is a newer but it, there's probably more bugs you click the install and it will install it on your system now if you would like to install it via the terminal I have the things I didn't bold it because when I bold it it ran down to the next line and I didn't want to tab it over because if you copied it with a tab it wouldn't work so you just simply copy this as you see paste that into your terminal put in your password follow these instructions here by putting in the next line then you update and then you hit sudo app install spotify client it'll basically download the dev file and install it by using the terminal and the last method that I show method 4 is you can download the dev package for your 64-bit machine which is basically will take you here or you can download it for your 32-bit machine when you click on the dev package if you have the GDB installer if you don't you can copy this to install the GDB so that when you double click on the dev file it'll come up with the package installer allowing you to install the package now once you click the install package you may see that your system needs some dependencies but when you click the install package it will go out get the dependencies install them and then install the program when it's completed do not close this little package installer dialog box until you see the status same version is already installed then you'll be able to close it now I'm using Ubuntu Mate 18.04 the long-term support and I'm using the traditional menu so I click application sound and video and then I click on Spotify to start the program now uh, I just show how to log in for the first time it'll show you with a screen if you've never logged in where you can sign up for a free account or if you already have an account you click log in and then you can start using it and then I do kinda compare it with the website down below and then I show you if you're using like Ubuntu Mate and if you look down here in the lower right corner next to the trash can you know you got different desktops I can click here and go away there's nothing on it desktop 3 and desktop 4 now since I do have the Chrome browser open in desktop 1 I click that and I see here if you do want to minimize the desktop client it will use up some space on your taskbar or your panel at the bottom if you don't like seeing it on the panel you can right click and choose to another workspace so that you're not taking up the panel space on the bottom and I'll show you that in just a few moments now let's take a look at the desktop client when I go to Spotify and click on the desktop client it will load and at the top it lets you see that I am logged in using Spotify free if you have a paid account when you log in it will probably say Spotify premium you can browse for a variety of different types of song, uh, songs now as you can see here this is the way that it loads up now yours may look a little different because I've been listening to uh, certain types of songs and, and sometimes it might want to recommend songs of type of music that I've currently been listening to you can browse different music you can see here you got topics such as uh, the genres and moods for summer pop hip-hop pride country decades workout mood you can scroll down there's all sorts of uh, categories that you can choose from like I said you can choose from millions of songs uh, across the internet it's streaming now with the free service you can't choose the option of downloading that's a premium service you can listen to podcasts you can listen to different types of charts like the top 50 here in the US or the top 50 global uh, there's lots of different things that you can listen to different types of charts you can least listen to new releases or discovered music or even uh, concerts you can browse and listen to songs through concerts you can listen to radio streams or stations that other uh, people have put out there that you can click and listen for you can listen to library that's made for you this is for uh, Spotify kind of keeps up with the type of music that you listen to like when I go to discover weekly at the bottom it knows that my two playlists are country and 80s when I look through here it mostly the things that it's offering is country or the 80s it's not offering me something that, that I don't normally listen to now if you can see here there's a little banner across the bottom it's not nothing that's going to damage your system this is what helps pay for the free Spotify 
Now, if I go back at the top, I, it shows my recently played. It will show like I've been listening to my country stations, my 80s hits, and some of the songs within the recommendations when I first installed it. I can click and see the songs that I favor. I can look at albums that I've been listening to, or artists that I've been listening to, stations, or even you have the choices for listening to or uh, watching videos. Now I haven't done that here, but that with the desktop client when you install it, this is the, th the topic that you have that you don't have with the web app. So if you look through here and look up here, the videos is the one feature that's missing through the web app. So that your desktop client, you do have the video feature uh, that's not available through the web app. So if you're someone that don't have a lot of space for this, you might want to watch your videos, say at YouTube, while listening to your music through your browser, whether it's your Google Chrome, your Firefox, or whatever browser you choose. You can listen to different podcasts. I don't through using Spotify. And right here is the playlist that you have available. Now you can go through here and customize it through your settings. When you click on settings for the desktop client, it looks very similar to the desktop clients of Windows and Mac. But like I said, this is unsupported, which means a lot of times when people hear unsupported, they think they can't get help from it. But like I said, I will provide some links at the bottom so that if you do have trouble with your Spotify, you can scroll down to the very bottom of my page and I have some links like the link that I've already showed you here on how to or here that shows you how to install it. Now I also have the the help. So if you have needing trouble with Spotify, you click this link and it shows it's for desktop users of Linux. You can actually uh, look for maybe where you're having trouble. And as you can see here, people respond, and uh, even the creators will respond. So there is help. It's just not an official. Uh, software or operating system that they support it's by the creators that that chose to do this for the Linux users and, and I'm glad they did uh, if you look through the settings you can choose your language you can filter out explicit content so as you can see here it's turned on so that way if my nephews brought their kids and they can sit and listen to songs and I won't have to worry about uh, listening to a lot of curse words while they're choosing the music that they like to listen to uh, streaming quality you, see, you can set on automatic but you can see here if you have low speed internet you can choose like low and normal you got high and very high you probably can't choose very high with the free I just have it set at automatic uh, this is turned on it's kinda like with the pithos if you've watched that video where you can normalize it where the volume you don't have one song blurting out and another song that's very low you can choose to open the devices you can look at the devices that you have this installed on you can say to make a uh, new public uh, your playlist public which is turned on you can set private sessions you can make it public activity on Spotify and you can show your recently played artists so you've got lots of things and you can even connect to people that are on Facebook if you have a Facebook account now for advertisements as I say with a free version you will have some advertisements you can actually uh, change your advertising preferences so if you see an ad for maybe if you're a guy that lives alone and you don't want to see a, a women's shampoo or women's deodorant you can go in there and change your uh, advertising preferences so that the the ads basically cater to the things that you would normally like to look at and like I said the ads help keep this service free now let me quickly compare this with the online app as you can see here when I go to my country I've already created a country playlist and this is a playlist that I've created and a couple days ago I let it start from the begin very beginning and it will play uh, all the way through until the end or until you stop it when it gets to the end of your playlist it will stop so as you can see here I have I don't know if it tells I have 86 songs that will play for 5 hours and 14 minutes now I didn't sit and listen to those I just let it play and I would walk away and come back and it was still playing so it will not stop you know like if it won't prompt you and say are you still there and if you don't hit OK it closes in the background so that way if you're listening to music you can kinda of walk in a room and still hear music playing like I said there may be a quick little ad to pop in occasionally but like I said that helps keep this a free service you can always look at your recommendations and add songs to your playlist and if I'm not mistaken you can add like 10,000 songs to a current playlist 
So for my country playlist, as you can see here, I have 86 songs. I do have more songs to my 80s hits because I listen to more 80s music than I do the country music, but I do like the country genre. So you can choose and create a song list, playlist for whatever genre that you like and have music uh, for that genre playing in the background. Now let's look one more time at comparing the web app with the desktop client. They look very similar as you can see here but like I said you will have more options within the desktop client. You do have that video that I once mentioned compared to the web app. But if you're struggling for space, if you don't have that 268.68 megabytes available on your hard drive then I recommend using the web app. If you do have the space then install the desktop client. Now I'm going to close out my web page and eventually you'll see this video linked at the bottom and if you found this video on YouTube I will provide a link below but I'm going to close all of the web browsers uh, and tabs that I have up here. Now I have nothing installed uh, running in the background except my simple screen recorder and Spotify. Now if I were to click and start playing this, now I've got it muted but I'm not going to, but if I had this clicked and started playing I can minimize to my taskbar or panel at the bottom but as you can see here it will create space on your panel. Now if you right click, if it's open I'll show you what it looks like. If I say to go to workspace 4, since it's open you see a little Spotify icon in your fourth desktop. Now I can play and look, it takes up no space on my panel. The only thing that's taking up space is my simple screen recorder because if you can see up here, little red dot, my simple screen recorder is running. Now when I click to the desktop 4, you can see that it's playing. I can send it back to my desktop or workspace 1, come back over here, but watch this. If you minimize it and send it to one of your other workspace or desktops, you don't see the icon because it's minimized. It only shows you the icon for the open items that are on your desktop or workspace. So just because I put it away on workspace 4, that doesn't mean it's cutting off the audio. So if you'd like to listen to music but don't want to see the icon on your panel, send it to another workspace and you're still listening to music through your speakers but you're working for whatever the applications that you have running or games that you have on your system, you're working or playing or surfing and still listening to music and you don't have to worry about it taking up space. So if you're switching back and forth, let's say within LibreOffice, uh, maybe another program that you have open, like let's say for your balance in your budget or other programs that you have running at the bottom, maybe Penta, if you're working on editing an image or a photo, uh, you're not taking up some of that space with that icon for Spotify. And I can right click and say send back to workspace one and I go back here and there it is. So this is just a quick review of Spotify. Now if you want a more in-depth tutorial on all the features of Spotify, if you've never used it before, at the bottom on my website TechGumbo does a wonderful job going through here explaining all the, the features that uh, Spotify has and he goes through and illustrates it with his video. I do have a link that goes through where you can read all the features you can either choose to read it or you can watch the video on that. Here I just wanted to show you that if you're using Linux there are methods for installing the desktop client on your system. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you and have a great day.